man is refusing to give up his golf days to babysit his stepdaughter. He shared his story to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit where he laid out all the details. His wife, Jane, has a nine-year-old daughter from a previous marriage named Emily. From the beginning, Jane told him that he did not need to step into the father role for Emily because she already had an involved father. So he didn't. For five years, he spent his Saturdays golfing with his siblings. But Emily's bio dad remarried, which caused a change in the custody split, and Jane agreed to it without consulting her husband. Now Jane is enrolled in a Saturdays only 12 month long certification course, and with this change in custody, she assumed her now husband, the stepdad, would change his plans and not golf on Saturdays anymore so he could parent Emily. He told her no. He clarified that he doesn't mind being with his stepdaughter, but he shouldn't be expected to give up something that he loves just in order to suit Jane and her ex. Redditors were overwhelmingly on his side, believing that his wife never should have made changes to the custody plan without consulting him first, especially since they were doing it to make life easier for her ex. This scenario hints at some of the reasons why it can be difficult to make blended families work, but it ultimately comes down to communication. Adults in a blended household must communicate and consult with one another in order to make the family thrive. A simple conversation before making a major decision would have saved this couple a world of trouble. A woman called out her friend for not shaving and instantly regretted it. A woman posted to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit looking for advice after a sensitive encounter with her friend Emily. Emily is apparently an amazing person who also stopped shaving a couple years ago out of protest to the patriarchy. One evening, the two women went out for a drink, and Emily was lamenting her dating life and how she seems to get rejected. The woman would usually assuage Emily's concerns by telling her she's wonderful and the right man will come along. You know, the standardized friend response. But this time she took a different approach. Instead, she told her friend she should shave, which ended up hurting Emily. The woman apologized, but at that point, the evening was already thrown off course after that turn in the conversation. The next day, she texted to apologize again, but Emily didn't respond, which is why she took to Reddit. Eventually, Emily did respond and asked to talk about the situation, and both women were apologetic. And the woman reframed her initial advice to focus less on how Emily might change herself for men but more focus on her approach to dating and changing that. Sharing that Emily has typically been attracted to men who don't share her values, and maybe she needs to align her dating choices with her values a little bit more so that she's not disappointed. These two women are a wonderful example of how instead of exploding in anger, two friends can come together and share their vulnerabilities. Both women held themselves accountable for their own actions during a super tense situation, and in the end, their friendship was better for it. An adult son told his mom to get a job after he moved back home to save money. The adult son, a college student who recently returned home, shared his story in a since-deleted Reddit post. There were some circumstances that led to the young man moving back home, such as vehicle troubles, a recent surgery, and switching majors to something he could do at the college near his parents' home. His parents wouldn't require him to pay any rent or utilities, and his father was the breadwinner, making a good salary. But lately, his dad had been working overtime to cover his mom's excessive spending. The spending was getting out of control, but the father refused to deny his wife anything she wants. Things came to a head one night when the mom spent money that the dad had earmarked for repairs on the son's car. The mom got upset, saying that the son should be paying for his own car repairs and that if he was living there, he should be helping them out with rent. The son, upset, told his mom to get off her mm, and get a job and use her own money. The mother hasn't spoken to him since and he wants to know if he was wrong. The consensus on Reddit was that he'd done nothing wrong in telling his mom the ugly truth and that her spending should be reeled in, but that he could have handled it better. And this family struggle isn't an isolated incident. More and more adult children are moving back home to navigate financial instability. And it often does place an additional burden on the parents who may have expected to allocate their resources towards their retirement or other needs. Who do you think was right here, the son or the mom. A bride made a profit on her bachelorette party and she did this by charging each bridesmaid 
despite her dad paying for it all. The bride's future sister-in-law posted to Reddit where she revealed that it was a destination bachelorette party and that each of the 11 bridesmaids invited was charged $650 for the Airbnb. The future sister-in-law was salty about the high cost, but she paid it. The future sister-in-law later learned from her brother, the future groom, that the bride's dad had actually paid for the entire Airbnb. The future sister-in-law almost choked when she learned this fact and confessed to her brother that the bride had charged each of them $650 a piece. The groom had no idea. She later learned that the bride-to-be was supposed to refund everyone, but that never happened. It turns out the bride had no intention of paying her friends back because she had already spent that money on a swan ice sculpture for the wedding. The future bride did end up confessing that her father covered the Airbnb cost, but she called her friend's money a donation towards another wedding expense. The trip was non-refundable at that point, so the bridesmaids all decided to still go, but they took personal vacations while staying at the property. It's widely known that participating in a wedding party comes with expenses, and according to The Knot, bridesmaids often spend hundreds of dollars on wedding expenses. But taking advantage of them and stealing money like this bride did is no way to thank them for being such an important part of the wedding. The bride should have kept one thing in mind before making the decision to cheat her friends. Ice is temporary, but friendships can last forever. A husband wonders if it would be wrong to divorce his wife who won't get a job. He posted to Reddit, admitting that he's been working for years to save up enough money to buy a home and start a family. He's always dreamed of settling down in a home and becoming a father, and his wife shared that dream even when they were dating. They got married three years ago and decided to save, hoping to set themselves up for financial security. However, not long after they got married, his wife lost her job due to attendance issues, which came as no surprise as the husband admitted she's often late to things. At the time, things were fine, but he also knew that they needed another income to remain in a good position. The wife cycled through a couple of other jobs, including starting a business that ultimately failed, and racked up almost $20,000 in debt in the process. He just wanted to make her happy, so he supported her in all of this. After a couple of years, things started to get tense. His dreams are now on the back burner as he tries to dig out from underneath the debt, and as a result, resentment is growing. She refuses to find another job. Financial strain has led to tension in their marriage, and more and more couples today are reporting financially rooted problems in their partnership than ever before. Financial problems are one of the leading causes of divorce in the United States. With growing debt and no additional income, this man is facing a harsh reality. Should he leave his wife or leave his dreams of a home and family behind? Ultimately, marriage is a partnership, and if your partner is no longer supporting you or your dreams, it's valid to take a step back. A woman wonders if she was wrong for asking her stepdaughter to wake up early to make breakfast for her kids. In a since-deleted post to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit, this woman revealed that she has two stepkids from her husband's previous marriage and four kids of her own, with the youngest being only one month old. She also revealed that she does not have a close relationship with her 16-year-old stepdaughter. Her husband's job requires him to be at work at 6 a.m. and raising the kids on her own has burnt her out. So she asked her stepdaughter to get up an extra 20 minutes earlier to get the other kids breakfast and ready for school so this mom could sleep for an extra hour. The stepdaughter? She said no, saying that she wasn't their mom, she stays up late getting her homework done every night, and that her siblings are energetic and she didn't think she could get them to eat all of their food. The husband took the side of his daughter and has left this mother wondering if she's in the wrong. Considering the daughter lives with them, she didn't see the big deal. Thousands of comments on Reddit later, almost everyone sided with the stepdaughter, with some citing signs of parentification. Parentification is having to prioritize the needs of other family members at a young age in ways that are outside of what we typically consider healthy, as well as having to take care of a parent's needs when they're struggling. Left unchecked, parentification can affect kids as they grow older, leaving them chasing perfection and dealing with burnout and anxiety. But this situation is also a reminder that many parents, especially those with newborns, do not have the proper support that they need. The dad in this family may need to step up and support his wife in her efforts to raise their kids and not have those responsibilities fall on his daughter. A woman's husband refuses to watch their two-year-old for more than six hours at a time on his own. He says it's too much and he can't cope. This woman wrote into the UK-based parenting forum, Mumsnet, looking for some perspective. She wondered if expecting her husband to care for their child crosses his boundaries and ignores his needs. The mom revealed that their two-year-old recently only started sleeping through the night, describing their previous sleep schedule as two years of horror, and that her husband cared for the child one day and one night while she was away, and it, quote, 
broke him. Apparently, the husband doesn't believe that either of them should be left alone with the child for more than six hours at a time, and she's tired of arguing. The woman clarified that outside of this, her husband pulls his weight in the relationship and in parenting. Extended childcare seems to be the big hang-up. People in the comments wondered if it's more than a boundary and if there's a genuine mental health issue happening with her husband. Perhaps he's struggling with extreme stress and anxiety when he's left alone for long periods with their child. This mom's post illustrates how complicated caregiving can be, even in a two-parent household. There's a constant give and take, an endless negotiating of responsibilities. It's valid that she's frustrated, but it's also important to acknowledge that her husband shared his vulnerabilities with her, which is a pathway towards mutual understanding. Both parents in this situation are struggling. And talking openly about what's wrong is the best way to move through the hard times and establish an equitable caregiving routine. A woman is upset with her husband after he chose to go on a golfing weekend trip with friends just three weeks after their third child was born. Posting to the UK parenting forum Mumsnet, she revealed that she's still recovering from a C-section delivery and that she's still struggling with basic tasks around the house. She still needs her husband's help. She wonders if she's right for being upset that he went on the trip. She had only recently been cleared to do housework and her husband was supposed to be picking up the slack, but he hadn't done any of it. It's an uncleaned bathrooms, no vacuuming, kids toys and dirty clothes everywhere kind of situation. He had taken paternity leave, but was apparently using it as more of a vacation than helping with the house and kids. She says she's still exhausted and sore while he is swanning off to play golf. Many people came to her defense saying they would also be upset if their partner went on a trip immediately after having a baby. There's an intense recovery that happens after having a c-section which is a major abdominal surgery where seven layers of muscle are cut through so it's no surprise that many women struggle to take care of themselves let alone a newborn other children and the house after having this procedure instead of picking up his clubs this man should truly take on the role of fatherhood and use his hands to support his wife and take care of their household after all the golf course will still be there next time A woman's husband shaved her hair with an electric razor? As a joke. She shared the story on Reddit, saying that she and her husband were getting ready together in the bathroom. When he stopped shaving, reached his electric razor across the counter, and she saw her long locks hit the sink. The husband started laughing uncontrollably. This wasn't an accident. And she started to get emotional and yell. The two had a huge fight, while he continued to laugh at his prank. This prank was far from harmless, though, because he had shaved a section of hair at the top of her head. This woman had tied a great deal of self-worth and identity to her hair, as a lot of other people do. And her husband shaving it had consequences that would affect her self-worth and identity for years to come. He said it wasn't a big deal and did apologize, but she still felt uncomfortable and called the prank sadistic and abusive. The prank calls into serious question issues of trust and respect. One partner's grasp at control is a common sign of a toxic relationship, and this husband's prank seems to be exactly that. She's lost all trust in her husband, and many commenters on Reddit urged her to take a greater look at her marriage as a whole. And the husband needs a lesson in what's actually funny, because comedy should never be at the expense of another person. This woman now has to face the reality of her marriage and how her husband might not be who she thought he was. A grandmother sent her grandson to bed without dinner when he refused to eat what she cooked. In a since-deleted Reddit post, the grandmother revealed that she's a vegetarian. The OP's daughter, along with her husband and three children, recently moved in with this grandmother because of financial difficulties. The mother of the children usually provides their meals, and her picky five-year-old has expressed no interest in eating the meals his grandmother cooks. One evening, the mom was out late with some friends. When nine o'clock rolled around and the grandmother hadn't heard from her, she ended up making dinner for herself and her grandchildren. The five-year-old was upset at the rice and steamed veggies dinner and asked his grandmother to cook him chicken nuggets. He said no as she was uncomfortable cooking meat and the child got upset and threw the plate of food on the floor and it broke. She then sent her grandson to bed without any dinner. The mother arrived home at around 11 p.m. and was quite upset with her mom for sending the child to bed without dinner and she told her mom to get over herself and make the mm, 
chicken. Commenters on Reddit were split, with some saying it wasn't the grandmother's responsibility to make the kids dinner when the mom didn't arrive home on time, while others argued that the grandmother should have prepared an alternative meal for the hungry, picky child. Sending the child to bed hungry may affect their sleep quality, according to Stephanie Jackson, a pediatric neurologist. Jackson suggested offering a small snack to her children before bedtime if they didn't finish their dinner in order to help them get the correct amount of sleep that they need. The grandmother later clarified that she offered the boy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and allowed him to eat a few crackers before bed. What do you think? Was grandma in the wrong? A new mom of two-month-old triplets left her babies alone inside of their apartment so she could take a breather, and her fiancé called her a horrible mom. She posted on Reddit saying that she sat in a chair right outside the front door with the baby monitor while the babies were inside, crying. She says she does this to take a mini breather because she starts to have little panic attacks when she can't get the babies to stop crying. Going outside gives her a chance to calm down. One day, her fiancé came home and caught her outside and accused her of being neglectful, said she put the kid's safety at risk, and called her a horrible mom. She was hurt by her fiancé's reactions and said she didn't think she was doing anything wrong or putting her babies in harm's way. In all truthfulness, moms and dads need to take care of their own well-being if they want to be good parents to their kids. Parental burnout is real and can be compounded when left alone to take care of three newborns by yourself all day. WebMD notes that it's important for parents to prioritize self-care and taking time for themselves, which this mom did in brief increments. Becoming a first-time parent, especially to three newborns at once, is anything but easy and people on Reddit supported this mom in her efforts, noting that it's okay to take a moment to collect yourself at times when parenting gets tough. What do you think about how this mom handled the situation? A man is considering going no contact with his daughter after learning that she helped cover up his wife's affair. In a Reddit post, he revealed that his 18-year-old daughter approached him looking uncomfortable and nervous. Before he could say anything, she was confessing. This daughter admitted that for the past five years, she'd been helping her mom cover up her infidelity. And not only that, she'd agreed to accept gifts from her mother in exchange for her loyalty, a partnership she'd agreed to at only 13 years old despite her ignorance of the situation. The daughter also confessed that this man's wife had had affairs with six different guys and was currently in contact with her co-worker. The man admitted that he knew of one instance where his wife had cheated with a co-worker years ago, but he was confident that was over, and now he feels like he should have divorced her back then. His daughter's confession made one thing very clear. His marriage was now over. He'd even been secretly cheating on his wife as a form of revenge, but he'd stopped that and felt no regret. The teenage daughter had been dropping hints about the wife's affairs, hoping the dad would find out, but when he didn't put two and two together, she ended up confessing because she felt so much guilt. This daughter had been manipulated by her own mother and it was too much to bear. The dad knew his daughter had been manipulated, but he still felt betrayed and considered going no contact. The children don't need a parent cutting them off. What they really need is open conversations, a healthy boundary of space, grace, and love even when the relationship is strained. The father needs to remember that his wife's affairs are not his daughter's fault and it would be unfair for her to lose her dad over the mistakes and misguidance of her mother. The day after her birthday dinner, a woman received a payment request from her boyfriend for half of the meal. In a Reddit post, the woman explains that her student boyfriend, who couldn't afford a lot, was going to spoil her at a restaurant for her birthday. She had originally told him she wanted an expensive concealer for her birthday, but since he could only afford to either pay for her dinner or a gift, she told him she didn't need it and assumed he would be paying for dinner. After dinner and dessert, she went to the restroom and he picked up the tab while she was gone, so she just assumed he was paying for everything. But the next day, she got a request from her boyfriend for $65 to cover half of the meal. She was confused and he told her that she said once that he didn't have to pay for dinner. All she remembers is them compromising on him paying for the concealer or dinner and now she's upset that she had to pay for half of the meal. Should the boyfriend have paid for the dinner in this situation? It's hard to say without knowing all the details, but she did update her post to say that he got her a body mist that she wanted, so he did end up getting her a gift. The crux of the issue here seems to be that the two are in different financial situations and they need to communicate a little bit better. It doesn't seem that it was clear who would be paying for what on this woman's birthday, so she was caught off guard by her boyfriend's money request. A clear conversation before dinner could have saved them both a lot of frustration. What do you think? Who should have paid?
a grandmother-to-be threw herself a baby shower to celebrate her baby. A woman shared on Reddit that she and her husband are expecting their first child. Her mother-in-law has been over the moon since learning she will become a grandmother and has started referring to the baby as her baby. The mother-in-law wanted to throw a baby shower and invite all of her own friends. The mom-to-be asked if she could invite some of her friends to this baby shower, but the mother-in-law refused, saying this baby shower was for her friends only. The mom-to-be provided her baby registry link for the shower and shared that she was doing a garden theme for her baby's nursery. But when she got to this baby shower, every gift she opened was some sort of circus animal and she was very confused. When this woman's husband arrived at the end of the shower, he confronted his mom who said she didn't like the garden theme and was going to decorate a room in her house and circus animals for the baby so she created her own registry. This mom-to-be had had it. She informed her mother-in-law that she would not be seeing her grandchild. Family members are criticizing this woman and her husband for being selfish, and now she wonders if withholding the baby is going too far. People on Reddit believe the mother-in-law's behavior was inappropriate and controlling. It's perfectly acceptable to be an involved grandparent if the baby's parents allow it, but it's not appropriate to call the baby your own. Grandparents need to find a balance that respects the parents' wishes and promotes a healthy family dynamic. It's normal for grandparents to be excited, but important decisions belong to the parents. A man is considering divorcing his wife after she dropped his cat off at the animal shelter without telling him because she was pregnant and miserable. She became allergic to cats during her second trimester, specifically their senior indoor cat who her husband had raised since it was a kitten. The man explained in his Reddit post that the doctor said sometimes this can happen. The wife wanted to rehome the cat, insisting it was the only answer to their dilemma. The man attempted a compromise, saying that he and his wife could stay with her parents, who lived only 10 minutes away, while the cat would stay in their home and he would check on the cat every day. The wife was not at all satisfied and accused her husband of prioritizing the cat over her health and the baby's health. But he didn't want to traumatize the cat over something that might be temporary. He ended up making arrangements with his brother, who said he would adopt the cat when he got back from a trip in two weeks. But two weeks wasn't soon enough for the wife, who said the cat had to go ASAP. One day, the husband came home from work and found his cat gone. His wife said that since he wouldn't get rid of the cat, she did. The wife had taken the cat to a local shelter. He immediately went to the shelter and showed them a picture of his cat. The cat had had a heart attack in the shelter due to a large dog and passed away. The shelter gave this man back his cat's body in a shoebox. The husband could no longer speak to his wife and is considering divorce. Over 85% of Americans own a pet and losing a pet that you've spent a significant amount of time with can be grief inducing. While the wife's hesitation to keep the cat is understandable, her removing the cat to a shelter is a surefire way to build resentment in the relationship. Relationship. A woman was accused of being heartless for not letting her extremely ill ex-husband come live with her and their kids. The woman explained in her Reddit post that she split from her husband four years ago and it was very messy. He said he wanted someone younger. The two share three children in their 20s. After the divorce, she never talked to him again face to face and they only communicated through lawyers when it had something to do with the kids. A few months ago, this woman found out through her kids who all live with her that her ex was diagnosed with a quickly advancing cancer. One day, her kids sat her down and informed her that their father could no longer work, meaning he couldn't keep his house and he had nowhere to live. The kids asked her if he could live with them during the final months of his life so that they could care for him. The woman said no and was immediately offended that the kids had even asked because she and her ex do not like each other. Her children called her heartless, believing that she should give their father the opportunity to have peace during his final moments on this earth. Her ex-husband even reached out to her, asking her to reconsider and put the past behind them. She's now asking if she's being petty or if she made the right decision. Comment Commenters agreed that she has every right to put her own well-being first. She is under no obligation to allow him into her home and back into her life. What she can do is provide her children with emotional support during this difficult time for them. And there are other options like hospice or even having the kids move in with their father for them to consider. These kids trying to guilt their mother into housing their father is not only unfair, it's manipulative. She should be allowed to preserve her peace. A mom isn't sure how to get a boy with a crush on her 10-year-old daughter to leave her daughter alone. This mom posted to Reddit explaining that this boy is constantly passing her daughter notes and gifting her things, some of which apparently aren't too appropriate. 
One of those items, a smartwatch that he stole from his mom. This boy has been told several times that this girl does not feel the same way about him as he does about her. Even the school principal told this boy to leave this girl alone, but he ended up writing a note and giving it to the bus driver to give to her. It went as far as the principal switching the boy out of the girl's class and having them sign no contact contracts but this boy was not deterred. The boy showed up at this girl's bus stop, which was nowhere near his home. This mom is at her wit's end and doesn't know how to make this boy understand that her daughter does not like him. The excuse that these two are just young children diminishes the severity of the situation. Children can be taught consent and respecting someone's bodily autonomy. No means no, no matter how old someone is. And this mom, by supporting her daughter, is setting the example that her safety and comfort are important and that she shouldn't have to accept unwanted attention. In an update to her original post, this mom said that she's working with the school and this boy's mother to address the situation and that she is optimistic. Kids deserve a safe and respectful environment where they feel valued and supported. A woman ghosted a man she was madly in love with after one very odd dinner with his family. The unnamed woman, who was duetted and stitched into TikTok, took the extreme action after noticing her boyfriend's reaction to being served vegetables at dinner. She knew he didn't like vegetables, but she was willing to let that red flag slide in favor of his other positive qualities. He was hesitant to have her meet his family, but after five months of dating, they finally went to his family's house for dinner. When dinner was served, Things got weird. He immediately turned up his nose at the broccoli on his plate and refused to eat it. When everyone was done eating except for the broccoli on his plate, his mom came over and put each piece of broccoli on a fork and one by one Choo Choo Train fed the broccoli to her son. You know, like you do with a toddler. This man was 23 years old. 23. To make matters worse, at the end, he said, thank you, mommy. On the way home, this man informed his girlfriend that if they were ever to get married, she would have to take up this role as his wife, which led to the aforementioned ghosting. The relationship between this man and his mother raised some eyebrows. The term enmeshment refers to the toxic attachment that some mothers have with their sons, and that seems to be the main issue here. If she hadn't broken up with her ex, his codependent relationship with his mother most likely would have hindered their romantic partnership. She definitely needed to trust her instincts in this case and run fast. A working dad asked his mom to watch his kid for free and she said no, even though her son pays her rent. He took to Reddit, wondering if he was wrong for asking his mom to watch his kid for six months for free. You see, this man bought his parents' home a few years ago he and his family live downstairs while his parents live upstairs. He doesn't charge his parents any rent. They just split the utility bills. His wife has been off of work for three months with their three-month-old baby, but her employer just let her know that they wanted to extend her contract for another six months. They could use the extra salary and benefits, but they need childcare for their baby. So this man asked his mother, who he said is in good health, if she would babysit full-time for six months. She said no, that she'd only be able to do three days a week maximum, and that she was working she'd be too tired and have no life for herself if she watched the baby full time. He was sympathetic to his mother's concerns but felt like she should comply because he is, after all, keeping a roof over her head. People on Reddit made valid points as to why he was wrong because childcare is exhausting and his parents don't owe him anything. And when it comes to family matters, talking it out and setting realistic expectations are key. His father just assumed his mom would be cool with unpaid full-time childcare. But since it didn't pan out that way, he's rethinking their entire family dynamic. It's a reminder that clear communication is crucial and that assumptions can lead to unexpected issues and strained relationships. What do you think? Was he in the wrong for asking his mom for six months of free childcare? A high school teacher accidentally revealed that Santa isn't real to a 10th grader. The teacher posted to Reddit where she asked if she was wrong for assuming that all of her sophomore students knew that Santa Claus wasn't real. She was discussing the book Animal Farm with her students and in a discussion around propaganda, she was explaining critical thinking skills and used the example that children believe in Santa but later develop critical thinking skills and figure out that he's not real. However, one of her students piped up saying, wait, what? Santa's not real? And she appeared upset for the rest of the class. 
class. Now this teacher is wondering if she accidentally ruined this girl's childhood. Many Redditors were skeptical, believing that this girl was simply messing with her teacher. However, others shared their own stories of spoiling the truth about Santa for kids who they assumed were far past the age of still believing. It's not out of the question for a teenager to still believe, especially if they are clinging to the nostalgia of fond childhood memories. According to a poll conducted by Made for Moms, the average age that most parents reveal the truth about Santa to their kids is about 8 years old. By the age of 10, more than 80% of children know the truth. While there's no fine print that says when a child should stop believing in Santa, you may want to have a conversation with your teenager, just to spare them some embarrassment when they reach high school because by then most of their peers know the truth. When did you stop believing in Santa Claus? A man left his girlfriend and baby after the girlfriend got pregnant, and she knew he did not want to be a dad. He posted to the Am I the A-Hole subreddit, saying that his girlfriend went behind his back to get pregnant, refusing to listen to his preference. He revealed that he was the oldest of six children, spent most of his childhood raising his siblings, and never wanted to be a father himself. He started dating his ex in 2017 and made his position abundantly clear, but at some point later, she got baby fever and decided she wanted a child. He suggested they break up so she could find a partner who wanted to have kids and start a family. They took a break before she asked if they could get back together. Eventually, she revealed that she had stopped taking birth control and gotten pregnant. She had the baby and this man says he just can't do it. He offered to pay any financial support she would need for the baby, but he just can't stick around. He claims he now looks like a deadbeat dad, but also admits that he never wanted to be a father in the first place. The majority of commenters agree that she shouldn't have gone off of birth control without telling him. But as they say, it takes two to tango and contraception is the responsibility of both partners in a relationship. He is allowed to make the decision to stay out of his child's life, but there's always a shared responsibility when bringing a child into the world.